Hello everyone, I'm Devin Rue from Rue Inc. and today I'm going to show you how to make aged paper. Um, you can use it to make neat little tavern signs, wanted signs, um, anything that you want to post for maybe your game night, uh, letters to your players, or even to use it for your maps. We'll show you how to do some really nice little frayed edges, how to stain it, get it kind of old looking, and then I'm also going to show you how to add uh, a varnish over the top of it that'll make it much more durable than regular paper. Kind of kind of gives it a leathery feel and a nice little adds more depth to it. So let's begin. So we're going to start off with one. I use parchment paper underneath my projects. So whatever I'm doing, one doesn't stain the surface I'm working on, and two, it doesn't stick to the project that I'm actually doing. Um, and you can find parchment paper at just about any supermarket. And I use it multiple times, and then when it's, it just gets uh, too much, I'll throw it away. So the most important part of this project is the paper that you're going to be using. So this is 90-pound drawing paper. And uh, as opposed to, like, cardstock, which has a gloss surface, uh, it actually uh, makes it so the ink will smear. Uh, as we do further steps in the project, whereas drawing paper is made to absorb ink and it works a lot nicer for these types of uh, projects because we're going to be putting this through your printer, hopefully. <laughs> it all works out well. So, um, and this is 90, 90 pound. I work with maybe 80, 70 is kind of pushing it. Uh, anything less than 70 pound will start to wrinkle a lot. You won't be able to get it through your printer. Um, It'll actually like kind of like rub through the paper a lot easier. So um, 70 is maybe the lowest. I know that 80, 90 pound paper is a little bit more expensive, but it's worth it for the project that you're doing. Um, so we're going to just start off there. So to stain the paper, I use instant coffee. And everyone asks me why coffee? Because it's easier for me. You can use tea, you can use tinted watercolor paints, you can use whatever, or severely uh, watered down acrylics if you wanted. It, it doesn't matter. However, I have found that coffee does a, a lot better job. It doesn't wrinkle the paper as much. I can get a lot of different layers going on. I can, it, it's because it's obviously very thin, it's a lot easier for me to work with. I can work it into the paper. Uh, it doesn't leave um, colors where I don't want them, like paints will do, and it's fairly inexpensive. Um, and it, it's really quick, it dries very quickly, which is also another thing if you're impatient in, what, in your project. And I just smeared across the paper. Now the important part is to make sure that this dries flat because like I said, it's going to go through your printer. So it's going to curl a little bit, but you're going to try and leave it on a flat surface. If you end up using the coffee, um, it is one heaping teaspoon for every ounce of water. I uh, heat up the water like I would normally uh, add the, um, the instant coffee. I let it cool down so that's why it's in a jar and I put it in my my fridge because I can use it for more than one project as long as it's not um, doesn't grow mold or anything you're pretty good so while the paper is wet I'm gonna dab a little bit more around the edges so um, when you're working with the paper if you want to have different tones in the paper itself while not having defined lines, and I'll show you the difference in a moment, you're going to work with a wet on wet surface, which means that while you still have the first wet layer of staining going on, you're going to apply another one. And what will happen is, see here, where it was starting to dry already, and that's the other reason I love to use coffee because it dries very quickly, you'll see a definite line between 
the new application and the old one. Whereas here, where it was still damp, uh, it kind of blurs more. So you'll have a more distinctive line going on. And I just dab it. You can use a sponge. I use brushes because I used to paint on canvas and I have them in multitude and I just like using them. Um, to create speckles in them, you hold one hand out and just tap your brush against it. And there you go. And as you see, because wherever it's drying, the dots will actually kind of stay more formed. You'll see more of a definite line. Wherever it's still damp, they'll start to instantly spread out. So, to give you examples of the difference in this, so this was a wet on wet um, application. This was mostly wet, and I just put some drops on it, and they spread out a lot. And then this was a wet on dry application, and you can see the very distinct lines around the droplets. So, that's kind of what, you know, you can go with either one, whatever you want to whatever you think would work best for your project. So once you have this done and it dries, get that out of the way, um, you're going to let it dry flat on one side. Once it dries, you'll turn it over, you'll do it to the next side. I recommend wearing gloves because coffee can be absorbed through your skin and, you know, if you don't want to be awake for the next couple of days because you're just sitting there playing with coffee and and uh, absorbing it through your fingers, you know, wear gloves, or if you want to stay up all weekend, that's fine, you know, nothing more, you know, So once like your gaming. paper is done, dried, everything else, you're actually going to put it through your printer, and you will put it on your best quality printing on plain paper. This makes sure that it doesn't add too much ink, and it comes through with the most crisp lines, and it'll come out something like this. Now, as you see, the paper, the, the image itself looks a little, little dull. We'll fix that in a moment. But for right now, this is what it, it should hopefully look like when you're done with it. <laughs> um, so this is my map of Avalon. And so now I'm going to show you how to make these lovely little torn sides. So you're going to take a straight edge, it can be a ruler, it could be, I don't know, whatever you have handy, and you're going to hold it up to the edge of the paper. Um, you don't have to do it in a straight line, you don't have to, to really do it, you're really just doing it or holding this there to keep it from accidentally tearing into the image. Unless, of course, you want it to kind of fade into it, and that's fine too. But you're just going to pick up a corner. And you're just going to peel it. Coffee, whether you're using a, a sponge or a brush, and you're just going to go over, kind of messy, you're going to go over those those tears, those corners, everything else. Now, <clears throat> as you can see, I'm actually putting coffee over the ink. So the reason that we use this type of paper is because once the ink has been absorbed and has dried in your paper, um, you can go over it with a little bit of liquid and it'll smudge it a little, but nowhere near as much as it would on like cardstock or or regular paper. So you can have you have a little bit more leeway and and uh, more room to play and actually have a better looking um, aged map. So we're going to set this aside. We're going to let it dry, and then we're going to come back, and I'm going to show you how to use the varnish on it. Okay, so while our map is drying, uh, I'm going to tell you about a great product that I use to seal and finish all of my maps and projects that are like this, whether the letters, tavern signs, wanted posters, whatever. Um, it changes the depth 
of the actual image itself that makes the ink kind of stand out a little bit more. It does make it more durable. It gives it a leathery feel, and it's just a great project to, uh, product to use overall. And it's actually the one that most people um, are usually, usually the most surprised that I use, and it's Mod Podge, but specifically the Hard Coat Formula. So Mod Podge, if you don't know what that is, is basically a white glue, kind of similar to like Elmer's white glue, which we're, most of us are familiar with. But they make several different formulas, including like an antique finish, um, semi-gloss, high-gloss, everything else. But I use specifically the hard coat formula simply because Almost all the other formulas, except for maybe the antique, kind of leave, um, it kind of feels like the paper is going to stick to itself or other paper or other things it comes in contact with, whereas the hard coat doesn't have that. Um, it still has a somewhat glossy, as you can see, um, surface, but it isn't as glossy as the other one, so it doesn't look as, as bad or cheap or anything else. Um, and like I said, it, it just kind of keeps it from feeling tacky, but like the pages are all going to stick together. So uh, you can actually use this on, on uh, projects. Like I use it for uh, as a sealant uh, after I've stained some of the wooden boxes like I do with my um, dice trays and stuff like that. So you actually, there's quite a lot of use to this. So let's grab our map. So here's our map. It's nice and dried. And we're just going to take, so I put my Mod Podge in a jar just because it's easier to get it out and easier to, to clean. So you're just going to take a sponge and you're going to apply a nice thick coat. However, you're really lightly skimming the sponge across your paper. And the reason for that is you're just looking to spread the Mod Podge, not push it into the paper because you are applying a, a wet uh, application to your ink and you do have the chances of sm uh, smudging it no matter how long it's been dry. So you don't really want to work it into the paper, you just want to spread it across it. So, um, I don't know how well this is visible across the uh, the camera, however, there is a slight milky film across the actual paper. And while you're applying it, it will kind of look like you're smearing the ink, but you're actually not. Um, it's just, it'll, it's changing the color of it, it's changing the depth, and as it dries, it'll actually look like the ink is starting to stand out more which is what we want. It will also highlight the difference in colors in your, your coffee staining or whatever it is you had used, and it'll bring out little speckles that were in the paper that you may not have noticed before. So it actually does add a lot to your finished project. And like I said, using the parchment paper, it's not sticking, even though I was going over it, it's actually getting on the parchment paper itself. So you're not worrying about ruining this whole project that you had just done because you're trying to peel it off of whatever surface you were um, creating it over. Um, don't worry that it is that milky white color. It will dry clear. You're going to want to make sure you have a nice thin layer over it. Um, and you are to cut down on the streaks as much as possible because it will actually add texture to the map or to the paper. And once this dries, you're going to want to add like another two, possibly, uh, well, you're going to want to do a minimum of two coats for every project that you do. Three is probably the best. Um, you can add more if it's something you really want durable or something that you, uh, depending on how leathery you want it to feel. So, um, however, if you're specifically going for aged paper, you're going to want to leave it at just two because it still has the paper almost like a delicate feel, like, oh, this is really ancient kind of feeling. I don't want to ruin it. So when you're done, 
and everything is done drying, you'll end up with, like I said, a very durable, and this actually has about three coats on it, so it actually still has some snap to it. Um, and this is just, a it, it's nice and stiff, so if I wanted to make like a wanted poster, this is perfect. Um, this, however, only has about two coats, and it's still perfect. doesn't snap as much, but it's a nice, perfect little, and you want to note, as, you know, if you've played Skyrim, you know this from the Dark Brotherhood, um, and you can fold it. to show you what it looks like and it'll crease beautifully so this is great if you wanted something that that looked a little bit more worn it'll hold those creases if you want it to look like it's been very worn with those creases you simply fold it back and forth and the great thing about the Mod Podge is it'll add those wrinkles in there very crisp and very sharp so it'll actually kind of look a little bit more like it's been folded and unfolded numerous times and meanwhile you've only done it a few and there you go so that's how you can make aged paper frayed the edges make it stained and make it durable and a great little prop to add for gaming night